to be connected <laughs> and I get this uh, things from different sources sources for example nominal techniques and there was this conference um, nominal nominal techniques yeah. yes I saw that paper that's that's fascinating and uh, I, I could see uh, uh, you know it, it, it's it's yeah. just one of the many rabbit holes that I could jump down you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is way too many things. Um, by the way, uh, Tomislav is about to, because he actually grabbed me and forced me to speak about state books. <laughs> nice. Well, he, he said he wanted to hear about it too? Yeah, uh, that's why I'm like delaying. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Jim, um, I want to show you something uh, right quick, if, if, if I can interrupt. Because this has to do with uh, sorry, share, share. Okay, uh, regarding our discussion yesterday in um, about Keybase, I was asking about the command line, the CLI, and uh, this guy said, well, it looks pretty clear to me, Keybase, wallet, send, uh, username, amount of Lumen, Lumen, and you enter that and it comes back, send 1XLM one X, one XLM to DB, type yes to confirm, yes. We never see that. I was, I was wondering if you could go to the CLI and try that Keybase wallet send DB1XLM and see if it asks you to confirm. And don't do DB, do uh, Keybase wallet send Gary Bot uh, 1XLM. Hmm. So that's just part of their APIs, is you can send around the uh, Stellar tokens. Yeah, I mean that's that's just uh, the the CLI. You know, I mean we can we can reach the API through there, but uh, yeah, it's, hmm. it is slick. Uh, we can talk about Keybase one of these days if anybody's interested. Jim, yeah, I'd be interested what their APIs look like. I haven't looked too much into them. Um, oh, I, I can show you pretty much what the, uh, okay, um, here, here are the commands for, for Keybase through the CLI. Uh, and uh, so most of the commands we I use are through the chat or the wallet. And this is the one we're working on right now. Keybase, Keybase wallet send 25 XLM. It should come back with a, a confirm, and, and, but it doesn't. So, uh, but another one would be Keybase. Uh, you're not sharing your screen right now. Oh, I'm not? So, uh, sorry, there there are the the key base command line um, commands. Hmm. And the one I use is a chat uh, and wallet are, are they going to be the ones we use the most. Uh, I've got the... Uh, But um, for instance, when we get this thing, so it, for instance, on this one, uh, it'll send a chat message with the message in it. 
Oh, you know what? That needs a plus at the front of that. That's probably why that one didn't work. So that'll send 50 XLM to Gary Bot. But it won't, but it has to go to a channel. And so the channel we'll send it to is the Rolang channel. Okay, so see, it's coming back to me and asking for a confirmation here, but I don't know how to give it. They <laughs> didn't accept yes. And, there, you know, it also gets stuck in some sort of loop when I hit that Y. But so, Jim, I need your help. Well, it uh, seems to work. Um, uh, in Ubuntu. I want to see that because they asked me what bash I was running. Um, you're running, yeah, you're running git bash, right? Right. And that may be the problem. Uh, I want to see it run on your screen. Uh, Thomas Law, uh, Gary's reviewing uh, Keybase, uh, uh, transferring Stellar Lumens. Keybase Watson. Oh, Oh my gosh, it does work. It's it's my bash. No wonder I've been spinning my Good. wheels. Okay. All right. I know where to go next. All right. Well, uh, it seems to me the elephant in the room is, uh, is uh, the, uh, as far as consensus uh, goes, is the Casper uh, 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 long proposed times, uh, and uh, affectionately called the it, rabbit rabbit problem. Yeah, and. Uh, there's hand waving that there's a solution, but there doesn't seem to be any solution. Uh, I was wondering what people's thoughts on that were. And uh, um, if we can uh, contribute anything to uh, uh, the solution of this critical problem that's coming up at a time when we're supposed to be releasing mainnet uh, any day. Yeah, and what my, my one thought about that is I hope this problem wasn't what made Kent throw in the towel. He, I mean, according to Greg, it was, you know, he was just tired of the, the blockchain scene, which I can understand. But, uh, but this would, I mean, there's only you know there's there's only two people I think can can fix this problem, and they'd be Kent and Greg, and Kent left. Well, I think he's here until October fifteenth. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's hope he changes his mind. Uh, I'm, I'm anticipating that uh, uh, this problem is. Maybe uh, in in the, the in, in the first problems that we will see uh, for for consensus, hmm. I think we will see much harder problems in, in the future than this one. Yeah, I my personal feeling is this is a bug. You know, just a just a flat bug, and anybody could solve it on the development team if they you know when they put their heads to it. I mean, not anybody, but someone will will make a connection eventually, but. Uh, you know, I doubt I can do much to help with that. We were sitting in on the Art Node testing session on Thursday with Rao, and he was explaining the, uh, the, the field or criteria that you set in order to force the, the protocol to go to other validators uh, to to process the blocks, and that there was a, a setting that you set at point nine nine nine, and I didn't understand exactly what that um, 
number represented and how that fit in as, as far as what uh, so there was setting the the validators to a hundred percent to where and as opposed to zero so if it's zero percent that's that's as if uh, you're the only one processing blocks uh, but if you set it at a hundred then you're forcing everyone to process blocks before you so did anyone understand that the what that point nine 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 was and I just need a better understanding of that. I, I My understanding was uh, that was the stake. What what uh, what is it? The uh, oh, the stake. Okay. Yeah, the, the stake, but uh, the stake of other validators. The stake of percentage others. of uh, of stake of other validators that you can include in justification, like the the minimum stake uh, that you need to include. So if you if you have point uh, uh, ninety nine. That means that uh, you, you almost you, you need almost all other stake in your justification. So you will probably need uh, uh, blocks from all other validators, uh, so that you can produce another. So that point nine nine nine, that represents that is it that ninety nine percent of all other validator stake needs to be. Uh, uh, in process. Okay. In, in justification of your in, justi in justification. Okay, that helps. Thank you. So the normal I, I, test. I would, I would like to, uh, yeah, I would like to ask Jay. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about uh, uh, this strongly seeing and relation to to this? <laughs> because there is some kind of connection, right? Yeah, I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean because uh, uh, they're they're struggling about a uh, 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 percentage of of this uh, 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 of this amount for for justification, and uh, uh, which is not completely clear what is the correct number, but uh, uh, as as my understanding in in, uh, in hash graph they have this number fixed right you know what it is two two thirds right it's, it's not something that right. That's the point at which, um, yeah, so I mean, I'm still, I guess, just trying to like draw the analogy between the two. Like, um, so this is the threshold that you need uh, of all validators in the network to stake on your block in order for it to be considered mm. final or, or what point is it considered final? Oh, I like this stake on your block, right? This is exactly what justification is, right? You are taking other stakes and say, okay, I'm justifying this with, I don't know, two thirds of the, of the stake of the other validators. Mm, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, but I mean, yeah, so each validator is justifying some new block and, and you propose a new block. And so you're saying that some threshold of the staking pool has to justify this block. And once that happens, is that considered finalized? No, no, uh, you just, you, you, uh, with this uh, amount of stake, uh, uh, these other blocks, you can just uh, justify your next block, creation of your block. But this doesn't mean anything. You just, uh, you, you, you're just allowed to, to create a new block. Mm. So when the and you're, other validators use your block, Oh yeah, yeah. It's only it's only when they're building on top of your block that your block could yeah. ever become. Is, final. is this connection with just uh, seeing and strongly seeing and right? Yeah, I, I was wondering about that seeing and strongly seeing the connection. But uh, um, I mean, basically, what happened is uh, uh, nobody could uh, propose a block, it just went, went to deadlock, right? When they, uh, at two thirds, just the- You mean if you don't have enough other validators, other blocks to create- Yeah, well, when you, you know, when the two thirds is without your stake, right? You're, you're, yeah. you're considering yeah. Uh, uh, other stake without, not counting your own. Yeah, this is, for you, this is 100%. 
Um, but uh, Jay, how you create a new block? Uh, can you just create a block without yeah. thinking about justification or you need to uh, stake uh, from other validators? Yeah, well, it's weird in Hashgraph because you don't, there's not even a concept of blocks, just events. And, um, you know, an event is itself a justification because it has a self parent and another parent. And so, you know, it kind of, the structure of it builds off of like a previous graph. Um, but, you know, there, there's not like a specific block at any point in time that you can say like, this is my creation. Every event that you pass around is mm. something that can be finalized. So from that perspective, like when you think about it, like it, it there's never a point at which it would be impossible to propose a new block because all you, all you ever have to do to create an event is gossip to somebody. Just you could gossip a completely empty, no transactions or anything, just the structure itself. Just, so. just, uh, uh, just with other justifications, right? With other events, you're just saying, yeah, I, yeah. I seen this and oh, so you don't have this uh, notion of uh, stake that you need to justify, right? You, you can easily create new blocks. Yeah, I mean, there's the hash graph itself is really just like, uh, you know, it's approximating a complete view. So, you know, everybody's randomly gossiping to each other. And that can happen regardless of any like ideas about voting or finalization. And through the randomly gossiping, eventually you'll reach a complete view among everyone. Mm. So. Uh, yeah. So you, yeah, you I don't need, know. you don't have exactly consensus. You, you just have a like, uh, uh, ordering of events. And then you need, on top of that, you need some kind of way of making consensus from this because you have ordering. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you basically get consensus because you have that ordering. Um, I mean, do you mean like checking uh, that a state runtime is like valid or something like that? Like that the transactions are valid within events? Uh, uh, no, I, I was just thinking that can this happen, this, this rabbiting behavior, can, can it happen in hash graph? Mm -hmm. if, yeah. Because you, this is exactly the problem. Uh, when, when they didn't have this synchronous constraint, uh, rabbiting is like very easy to, to achieve. So in hash graph, you don't have this, uh, or you don't have this synchronous constraint also. So you can just gossip like crazy and someone can, so, so someone will just, try to recover all the messages that, uh, you know, <laughs> this rabbiting ball that is just creating them. Yeah, as long as it doesn't become like a, a DOS attack or something like that. I mean, thinking about it, you can get, uh, when you receive a new block, that can be, I think, O of N with the number of, God, I'm trying to remember now, I think with the number of validators in the network, so, I mean, there's not really a way to, to DOS uh, a node. Um, so, I mean, yeah, if you had like a rabbit validator that's just, you know, 10 times faster than the next validator and they're creating 10 times as many events, um, I think that would be totally fine. You know, these people are passing around events and as long as you're able to still receive events from other people, there's no like liveness that's going to be cut from that. Mm. Like there's no, that, that won't stop the network from happening. Like you can always continue to receive events from other people because events themselves aren't coupled to the idea of a justification, you know? It's not like you can't propose a new block until you get all the other validators to catch up. Instead, you just randomly gossip and eventually reach consensus. I wonder if this all opens a way to, to, for this rabbiting behavior. Because Raul was said that uh, the problem was that other validators couldn't catch up and execute all the all the events that uh, 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 this rabbiting validator was creating. Mm -hmm. So, and then, so in that situation, but yeah, you, you are saying uh, others can also create uh, events without uh, uh, like 
following this routing uh, mode. Yeah, I mean, it you're saying like, like whoever had the greatest stake was always going to eventually get ahead of everybody else. You know, I mean, it seems like to me that you're not going to, there is no way to prevent that. Why the greatest stake? I'm are, sorry? Are you saying proportionally or, or greatest in, in, uh, in, not in proportion to stake? Um, because if, if you if you have the most stake, you want the the, the same amount of uh, of traffic, or, right? Or, or yeah. you mean this is not proportional? I, well, I'm not sure what you mean. A validator has the most stake; it's going to be numerically the most stake, and it's also going to be proportionally the most stake. I mean, if, yeah, yeah, with, this makes you know, sense. If, 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 um, uh, so, uh, w what it seems like is that this is a flaw in Casper, that uh, um, okay, we can see that um, uh, in, in uh, uh, in the short term, it works, but in the long term, even a small amount of higher stake will cause this rabbiting problem. So how does this correspond to stake exactly? I thought this was just about the speed of a node and that any node could be a rabbit. No, it, uh, I don't believe that's so. I believe it's always the, always the node that has the uh, you know, all the nodes that they're running are the same speed. You know, they aren't, there isn't, uh, uh, there isn't any faster or slower node. It's always, it's always the, the, the node that has the highest stake that rabbits ahead. Because yeah, it wins, ultimately, more than anybody else. And then Rao, Rao said that, uh, and this is like strange for me that uh, uh, th this is not, this is constantly uh, uh, like uh, this rabbiting uh, is starting to 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 become more and more uh, progressing with time. So th th this is strange for me because if if this validator is just rabbiting some amount and this is like fixed amount, uh, uh, th this is understandable. But how how can it how can it be that he he's, he he was you know, with time, this uh, rabbiting will, will, will be higher. So this, this is strange for me. Do you have any, any thoughts about that? Well, yeah, I mean, there could be a very small um, advantage that the, that, the, that the highest validator has. And so that advantage mm -hmm. takes a long time to manifest itself. That's my understanding of it. Hmm. Okay, the, um, uh, if I understand it correctly, and I think I was paying attention, <laughs> I may have it wrong. Um, a solution has to involve some kind of affirmative action. The guy who, the guy who says, oh, well, uh, no, uh, I have a, a bigger stake than anybody else, but uh, if I uh, uh, if I wheeled my weight around, uh, the network won't be live, and that's not going to be you know. Uh, so uh, I need some incentive to uh, 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 to uh, uh, gauge myself and. You know, and it may be that this uh, uh, synchrony constraint threshold uh, might be 
something like inverse to my uh, percentage of stake or something. Oh, you mean uh, it's, it's not fixed for all, for all validators, it's relative to, to the stake. Right. Some affirmative oh. action. Mm, yeah. This is in a way the, the first step to, to have like dynamic behavior of, 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 the, of this synchronous state. Yeah. It's like relativity. This, this it's like the, the, <laughs> the more mass you have, <laughs> slower yeah. the time becomes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So are you able to explain the rabbit pop problem from scratch, Tomislav? I feel like I still don't fully understand it. So my understanding is uh, uh, if, uh, if one validator can, can uh, propose blocks and justify just by itself uh, production of new blocks, if, we get, if, if he gain uh, advantage and start producing blocks uh, uh, so quickly that other validators uh, all can only uh, 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 replay uh, his blocks. Then he will just be the only one who uh, creating blocks. I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm completely understanding. Understanding why other validators can just you know <laughs> start producing their own blocks and say, okay, this this one is, you know, we will we will cut him off, right? Because he doesn't yeah. have enough stake. Yeah, as long as he doesn't have like literally, you know, over half of it, yeah. or, or or more than one third, right? We, we know yeah, that yeah. Uh, we can we can tolerate uh, until one third uh, Byzantine fault, right? So if this problem is for over one third, then I mean a lot of different things can happen at that point. Like why why should we yeah. even consider rabbiting, you know, as a possibility in the main network? If if one validator reaches over one third, then we have bigger problems to worry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is completely true. Yeah. So, so they are, they're, they're, they're having five validators. Uh, each of them is, uh, uh, I think it's 100 and 102, 104, 108 uh, on the power of two, right? And, and, and five, five, uh, five validators. So, so he, uh, none of them has more than one third. But Rao was saying that uh, in this situation, uh, one with the most stake can have this small advantage, which I'm not sure that I understand, you know, what is the exactly the advantage. Uh, they can just produce uh, uh, blocks uh, without synchronic, uh, uh, with synchronic constraint also. So yeah. th this is completely strange. Synchronic constraint on, 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 on point 0.9, so, so 90%. So this is like, how? <laughs> you, you, right? Yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah, because they should have a fresh start every time to retry. Yeah. Or every round. Yeah. 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 I was, you know, I sort of had a flash at the time why it happened, but I, I can't think of it now. But when they set this up initially and ran it, when we ran it, I guess, when did we run it? Like Thursday before or was it on Tuesday? Uh, that was, no, I guess it was the one before. That was with the fixed constraint. Um, it, um, uh, but basically what happened is no one could propose. Mm. It just, you know, went to a, a certain point and then no one could propose. No one, no one could get the, uh, 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 could get it, but you know another aspect of this from one of the meetings was that the what uh, was that the the there was a divergence between uh, the rabbits and the uh, and the turtles that there would be uh, a. Uh, uh, that in essence, the rabbits and the turtles would be fighting each other so that no consensus was ever reached. 
Hmm. And, and turtles are the one who are still processing or, right? Yeah, you know, it's not like, you know, it's sort of like, if you, you know, you could divide, you could divide the validators into two categories, those that are faster and those that are slower. Hmm. And you end up with a diver uh, two different views of what the contestants ought to be. But you were saying they all have the same speed, right? Yeah, I mean, there's no difference in, in, in the nodes in terms of, uh, you know, they're all doing the proposals at the same rate and everything. We, we the only difference them. between we, them is that they have, is that they have different states. They have different, I thought Thomas was saying, at least in that experiment, that it was five validators all with the same stake. So very similar stake, yeah, yeah, just very small difference. Yeah, they're similar, but they're not the same, they can't be the same. Mm. But so we're talking like the, really small differences, but yeah, 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 small, okay. okay. And, and mm. they, I, 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 I'm, uh, I don't know all the all the different results they, they have with different uh, bounds amount of bounds amount. Yeah, let's take a look. But it is strange that you can stack if if you have all the all the all the blocks existing. You can definitely justify your next block. So this is like strange. Maybe maybe this was some kind of just a bug in, in the code. Yeah, and that's what Greg said. I mean, in the Casper stand up on Monday, he, he basically said we don't know what it is, but I'm starting to think it's a bug. And um, and so I suppose that's why they, you know, the the discussion about the memory leak started because you know a memory leak would would uh, definitely be in the category of bug, and I can see a memory leak doing all kinds of of terrible things. But then then uh, I I think it was Greg and the weekly uh, meeting members uh, hang out or debrief that he said, no, it's not a memory leak. Did, is Steve, is that what you, is right. that what you, the, uh, I think Attic B had a question asking if it was uh, getting, asking for an update on the memory leak. And um, yeah, Greg, discounted that uh that aspect but he going discounted it as a possible cause of the long proposed times okay yeah and at that that was actually the first i've heard of a, a memory leak issue so and i don't have any uh background on that so yes so uh exactly but you were talking about this replay and going back to that casper stand up on monday I think Greg mentioned that there were somewhere five to 10 uh, instances where this, there's this replay uh, going on. Uh, so they want to look at that. And, I, and I'm not quite clear exactly what a replay is. Maybe someone could uh, uh, um, explain what, what that aspect is, if anyone's familiar with that. Is, well, replay is usually mentioned in terms of an attack. You know, I I was thinking uh, oh, replay replay of uh, of execution in tuple space. So when validator receive a new block, uh, he need to execute the same uh, code, uh, so that, uh, that, that that can check that is is valid and uh, so that it, they can accept uh, the block. Okay, so apparently there's several instances where they see that happening. So that in itself is something that needs to be addressed. Now, whether that's related to this rabbiting uh, nature is a question. So, uh, right. So, and, and ultimately, you know, uh, you know, I think they're leaning towards this as being a bug in the protocol as opposed to a, um, an issue with it. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and when you when you replay the code, you, uh, this should be like a quick operation, right? So if, if some other validator is executing some complex You're code on mute. and creating, Tom Sloth. Yep. Uh, no, he, he's not on oh, my computer. I, I, oh, is my mic? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I got a slow connection. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, when when validator replaying the code, this should be like much faster than than, than executing the real code. Right. But uh, Greg was mentioning this in, in, okay. in, one, in, one, uh, in one hangout, I think, uh, that he is, he is exploring this, how, how can you very quickly uh, check if some execution trace that you received in your block uh, correspond to existing point that you try to calculate. So is it, is it possible? So can, can, you, can you check the uh, continu continuity of, of execution? And then, uh, if, uh, then he mentioned uh, some, some, some work uh, that he's, he's mm -hmm. doing cur currently. Okay. Interesting. Is that so, uh, like uh, anything formal on top of the Rev VM? Like how are they, do you know much about how they're able to do that? Uh, he was just saying that uh, he's now researching uh, uh, this part. So that, yeah. that you, can, you can easily, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, someone can give you the, the, the like the, another type of space with, uh, you know, a, a lot of the execution and you, you can easily check, uh, is this possible from your point? And then, so you can easily merge the, the complete code. Mm. So yeah, I'm, I'm wondering. It has to do, this is, <coughs> as I understand, it has to do with the trace. You get a trace of the execution. Yeah. But you're not just re-executing it, you're actually performing a merge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you can somehow, yeah. And, and this will be part of, the, of this API, events API. Uh, at least Dominic uh, told me that we will be able to check execution, uh, tr uh, execution trace from, from, from the blocks. I'm not sure how this will be done, but. Yeah. The name of that API, so it's referred to it as event API. Is that how she, we should be referring to it as? Yeah, they, they call this event API. Because I, I, I've, I've been mislabeling what Dominic is working on. Uh, so hmm. apparently, so it, it's the replacement of the listen for data at name. So that's no longer going to be what we'll be using. So this, I guess we refer to it now as the, or perhaps the block event API. So the block event okay. API is the new listen for data at name yeah yeah, yeah. and it is it's it's it, it doesn't function the same way you, you don't okay. uh, pull this information to try to see when when something will happen when when, when the, the value be, uh, will be available but you will uh, get the blocks and uh, try to from execution trace uh, you will conclude if this block is uh, you know, on, on, on the execution phase that is uh, confirmed by other validators and when, when, it, when it, uh, it is finalized. Okay. So that, that's the point. And it, it pushes out the, the results to you or yeah, to your they, application. They will, they will have a web sockets connection. So uh, this is uh, uh, something that is now uh, it's implemented, but it's in, 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 a, in a dev branch. So okay. you, you just connect to the sockets and get, uh, uh, when each block is created, you're, you're getting the events. Okay. And the block is added and created and, and you get uh, a finalization event for, for when, when some block is uh, finalized. So you can, you can easily trace uh, all the blocks and you can, uh, when you receive finalized event, you will know, okay, uh, uh, until this point is finalized, so you can calculate. Okay, that. all right. That, helpful, thank you. So. Do they have I'm proofs sure. for finalization? Sorry? Do they have proofs uh, for finalization events that they can uh, send to like a light client? Uh, how, what do you mean by proofs? Like uh, a way to uh, show that when they say a validator or when they say that a block is finalized, it actually is. Mm. Uh, so this can be calculated from, from the blocks, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it can be, but if you're a light client and you don't have the full picture, yeah. you know, basically like sending something like a, a signed, the signed block itself. But I mean, I, you know, um, 
Josh, you brought up the uh, protocol called CODA, which uses zero knowledge proofs to prove to light clients yeah, when a block is finalized. I don't know if you have to go that far, but that'd be interesting. Yeah, this is a good question. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is something that is uh, uh, maybe good feedback from, uh, for, for Dominic and Archie developers that, you know, how to, how to, how, is it possible to, to create some kind of proof that you can easily check? Yeah. 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 I feel like that'd be really good to have. Yeah. You, you're just receiving events and what does it mean to have a proof? Maybe, yeah, some kind of signature of something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not totally sure. You know, you have a validator set and you, you could just send them, you know, the signed, uh, block which they could somehow verify, but you know, they don't have the whole validator set info. So you'd have to see how Coda does it maybe, but they do manage yeah. to get, get it down to O of one. Yeah. 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 This is an interesting point. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, the, the validators themselves have, you know, no like uh, staked incentive to tell the truth when it comes to a uh, finalization of blocks. Um, and you know, yeah. not necessarily that they would have a reason to lie, but it still seems like an, an unnecessary risk where there's potential for. Yeah, and when, when they are sending this information to other validators, they are in risk, right? They, they, they must say uh, uh, what's correct, but you are just, uh, you are maybe connected to read only node, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is not easy, easily to check, right? Because... <laughs> I mean, it seems that way, but I, all I know is that zero knowledge proofs do some weird magic, so... <laughs> <laughs> because, you, you, you know, can you be sure? Are you watching the... Are you, are, are you uh, watching the latest point in, 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 in this history? Or just someone created like a fake, uh, fake events and... Okay, okay. Now I see that what, what do you need is some kind of way uh, to check that uh, these blocks are really created with other validators. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah, that's, 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 that's something so. that you, can, you cannot uh, fake. You cannot fake other signatures, right? This is something that is, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I hope, I'm, uh, impossible. <laughs> but I, I do wonder if there's a way to. Um to prove it to a you know a light client that doesn't know the whole validator list so even if they got the uh list or a block signed with all the correct transactions that they don't have to then go get the validator list and check that all the signatures are on that block you know yeah okay uh, for now i was just thinking about the number of validators but as you said like maybe yeah we need some additional information. Yeah, if you could somehow prove the number of validators, like if that were itself a zero knowledge proof, I, I feel like at some point you, you have to translate it to zero knowledge because the light client just doesn't have the full picture. Yeah. But can you, can you do this only from, for, 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 from one message? Or you, need, or you need at least some part of the history, right? Or, or, yeah, or they can sure. do it just for one message? Yeah. You know, you, I think you, you do need part of the history. I think that's how Coda works is they're always depending on the previous, but I don't know what you would need to like get synchronized, whatever that means, you know, like a light client that comes in. Yeah, I, I was thinking maybe you can uh, assign some checkpoints. So, you know, I, I have this block, but I'm going back to the history, to the, the, the first checkpoint that is somehow verifiable verifiable sign and then i can conclude some other so you'd have to like download a, a state then <laughs> like yeah, as a like at least part of the state yeah because yeah. i was thinking how to how to build a client so i don't want to build the whole history but maybe the first time i i, I need to go to the to the genesis block and then i can <laughs> create my own uh, uh, hash from some, or, or sign some other hash. So I can, I can say, okay, this is a, a hash that uh, I don't need to check all the parents to the genesis. 
but you are, you are saying this is included in, in, in their protocol, so you don't have to do it uh, as client. Yeah, and you know, maybe, maybe it's something like the light client is downloading the, the proofs of each block, and that's what they're rolling up through history rather than the actual blocks themselves. <clears throat> But um, I mean, I'm not totally sure how it works. All I know is that they say, um, I mean, really all I can say about it is that you can go to a demo web page right now and it'll just with the WebSockets API right there show you that it's verifying uh, proofs as they come every few seconds for new blocks. So yeah. it's definitely fast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I will check again. I was, I was, uh, I was checking, what, uh, but I, I was not completely clear what, <laughs> what they are doing. So, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> me neither. Good idea. Good idea to, to check this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm curious if uh, anybody has good, um, like resources or like any articles that have been written about the rabbit problem that I could look at. I'm not sure for that. Where has it been, been talked about mostly? Wasn't there an RCAST, uh, perhaps, that Gre where Greg went over this? Um, I'd have to look back. So certainly in, in the Casper uh, stand-up. So on YouTube, if you go to uh, just search on uh, Casper stand up, uh, no no spaces. You'll get this Casper um, channel, and then um, and I'm not sure. Back well, actually, for the past several um, sessions, this has been a topic of discussion. So you can start with this past Monday and keep going back. And you can kind of, you'll ultimately get the history of how we've been working on solving it. And I, I do believe in one of the Casper standups, he talks about this naming of uh, rabbit and tortoise, how that came to be. So our, if, if, if that was discussed, I think he, he went on and discussed the, the, the nature of the problem. Now, which Casper stand-up that is, um, once again, you can go back. It, it, it's, it's fairly recently, so we, those come out each week. So you just have to go back a, a few weeks uh, before you can find that. So, uh, Okay. Yeah. I'll try looking through these. It'd be um, great if these were transcribed. <laughs> but uh, Now, the... Uh, the RCAS uh, sessions, the podcast, those are transcribed. So uh, mm -hmm. you'll be able yeah. to follow that way. It, Casper it, stand up is not. They're easy to transcribe on Otter AI, O T T E R dot AI. I would volunteer to do more, but my uh, nomination committee work is going to eat up all my free transcriptions so uh but i can recommend that it's 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 a snap once you uh once you get the hang of it you can transcribe any recording fairly easily audio you know, you know blogs blogcasts or uh youtube videos hmm. yeah it's too bad that yeah, sorry. yeah you uh, know what i need to do is i think i need Yeah, it's too bad that YouTube doesn't, uh, oh, crap. So, uh, the YouTube doesn't, um, open their APIs to their closed captions because like they've gotten shockingly good lately. They, they actually do, but, but, uh, navigating their, you know, their API is, is beyond my, capabilities hmm. they, they actually give you a transcription for each video yeah okay on, on, on that API oh. oh yeah um, 
um, you can you can even find things on GitHub that will will do that for you, uh, and I've used them. They're they're comp they're just complicated enough that I I re I've, I've never go back to using them. I always find some some uh, web interface that allows me to do it more easily. But I mean, Otter AI does does things that even YouTube's captioning won't do. Otter AI will, uh, will use AI to determine who's speaking. And if you plug the name in of that person, it'll, it'll go through there and find every occurrence of that person speaking, you know, mm. and, and the more help nice. you get it, the better it gets at recognizing voices. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. you can get you can get all kinds of downloads of the transcript. You can get PDF. You can get raw text. You can get it in uh, in subtitle formats. So if you wanted to add nice. subtitles to a video, you could do it with uh, the automation, and you could customize it in there. You know, you could have your your subtitles do more than just. Uh, what the speaker was saying but you know like put links in there and and uh you know to to papers that were being referenced and things anyway yes. good product i haven't subscribed to the pro version yet but i probably will be forced to soon Thomas Love, have you heard of the expression problem before? Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what okay. what uh, can you tell? I I haven't heard of it. What can you say about it that that we might uh, be able to understand? Uh, I think the uh, Philip Wadler was uh, first uh, uh, coined this term. Uh, of yeah, yeah. Expression problem. Yeah, and uh, Who? Uh, Philip Wadler. Uh, he was now de developing Bluetooth for for Cardano. Uh, yeah, he's done a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, uh, he was introducing monads uh, in, in in functional programming from, from mathematics. So, yeah. Yeah, very, he. I think it, the expression problem. He originally wrote about it in '98, and it starts with this, which I think is a good explanation of it. It's, the expression problem is a new name for an old problem. The goal is to define a data a data type by cases where one can add new cases to the data type and new functions over the data type without recompiling existing code and while retaining static type safety. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, mm, yeah. so, so uh, th this is... Uh, yeah, I was just gonna uh, say that, that's a deep problem, but yeah, I, I, I appreciate you can, you can easily You can easily uh, think about it uh, uh, in terms of uh, different styles of programming functional and uh, object oriented so so in, in object oriented programming you have uh, 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 type inheritance so <clears throat> so uh, uh, you can easily uh, extend existing objects with uh, uh, and, and you can add uh, so you can you can later in the code uh, extend existing uh, object with additional stuff without uh, rec recompiling right uh, uh, you can add you can add uh, new functions and this kind of stuff but if you want to change something in existing uh, object that is you know higher in the hierarchy uh, you need to recompile the code right so in that way you cannot e extend it uh, so fr functional perspective uh, is, is the opposite uh, uh, you can easily create new functions for existing data type, right? But uh, it, it, it's difficult to to uh, to change the uh, uh, the object. You need to recompile uh, recompile the existing code. So there there are, there are two aspects uh, uh, from from, from uh, two perspectives. So you, you you gain one perspective in in one aspect, but you lose the other one, and. There is usually uh, uh, some Venn uh, uh, diagram between these two. Uh, you know. 
uh, functional programming gravitates to, to give you this uh, kind of uh, inheritance and object oriented uh, is trying to give you this kind of uh, uh, freedom of uh, uh, just creating your functions. So that's the expression problem. How to, how to extend uh, uh, objects, uh, structures and also functions. And, and this, is, this is somehow achievable with this FX style of programming. Uh, with what is it? Uh, with FX, FX uh, uh, libraries. Uh, this is uh, in, in, uh, in a very, in a very uh, hand wavy way of, of, uh, of uh, saying, uh, like creating mixings uh, of uh, objects. So you are just creating one big uh, object with all uh, uh, all operations, and uh, 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 changing this object in compiled time with different uh, operations, you have the static uh, static guarantees. Okay. So yeah. The yeah. The the way that I even stumbled on the expression problem is uh, researching row polymorphism. Mm, yeah. Is yeah. that this a familiar is exactly, term? This is exactly how. Uh, uh, Effects are implemented in pure script with uh, row polymorphs. Mm, nice, yeah, yeah. I, pure script looks very interesting. It's got you know a lot of things I haven't understood yet, like all about the rank n types and yeah. you know the, yeah. these different things. But um, yeah, and, just, and they're they're using uh, row polymorphism or effects to to do side effects. Uh, uh, native native operations on the on the, on the browser. So interesting. And so you can actually call that. Well, how can you call that static type safety? Uh, from from the perspective of pure, of pure script, but is like FFI to to JavaScript. So you, you only have type safety on in the pure script side. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, even within pure script, if if you're able to modify you know, types by passing them through functions. Um, I, can, I can show you uh, some, some samples if you like. Sure. I do have to run in like five minutes, but um, yeah. Uh, maybe just an uh, example of uh, how the code looks like. It's very... Uh, I have one example that I was experimenting and this is how uh, this uh, uh, row, uh, row type is, is, uh, is defined. It's an effect of, uh, of this, uh, uh, I, I, I'm creating effect that uh, is composed of, of, of these effects. So it, it can it can access uh, access to to process operations, uh, uh, file system, and it can it can also create exception. And uh, as a, as a row polymorphic type, it can also uh, be something else uh, added to this. Uh, row oh, polymorphic interesting! Type. Wow, that's cool. So so this is like a variable for for all effects. Uh, this is just a variable. Uh, that you can you you can uh, uh, just extend, but you can also not extend. You can handle and uh, 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 create a pure function. So if 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 you handle exceptions somewhere, then you are just removing effects because it's it's handled. You know the, uh, later in the code this effect doesn't have any 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 meaning because you you handled all the cases as you said, you are handling all the cases. Mm. So you're, you're introducing some side effects, but later you're handling all the cases and you are just uh, 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 eliminating the, the effects. Interesting. And, and this is a concept from, from type theory. Uh, they have introduction and elimination as, as, as a form of defining uh, types. Hmm. Which type theory? <laughs> uh, so in, 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 this, in this talk from, from this professor Neil, uh, that, that Peter uh, uh, was put on, on Discord. Uh, 
he was explaining that uh, this introduction elimination and, 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 and uh, reduction rules you, you just generate. And this makes sense for introduction, introduction elimination, but for me it doesn't make too much sense how, how you get uh, reduction rules generated. Mm. And, and, and which, which type theory, I'm not sure that I can uh, answer that. This. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll definitely watch this talk. Uh, it's the most recent one he put up. Uh, Nominal PC. Uh, Peter, Peter, can you, can you, uh, can you help me? Um, sure. Uh, I will repost my <laughs> message uh, when I get to it. Uh, but <laughs> I think it's on computational calculi or... Uh, can you oh, search this one? This one? Yes, this one. Uh, for, uh, this is related to state box. And also, yeah, Peter, oh, okay. if you can say something about state box. Okay. <laughs> uh, Occupies discussion and um, expression problem. And yeah, isn't uh, type classes are, aren't the solution for uh, expression problem? Uh, well, not completely. Haskell type classes. Yeah, yeah. In a sense, they are, but uh, I, I don't think that you can achieve uh, everything that uh, that solves expression problem. Should I start a new uh, uh, recording for computational calculus? It's eleven oh five. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well.